Good evening, I'm WPDE Sports Director Rich Cramp-Hannis, and welcome to Damon's Restaurant in Myrtle Beach, where we present the third annual All Zone Team. Throughout the next hour, we'll meet the top 40 players from the PD and the Grand Strand, culminated by the presentation of the third annual Zoneman Trophy. It's WPDE's version of the Heisman. We'll meet the top 40 players, Mark Haggard and Walt Lehman. We'll talk with some of the coaches and players who made the headlines in this 2002 football season. And what a season it was. State champions in Lamar and Carver's Bay, state finalists in Lakeview and Conway. They have plenty of players on this team, as well as a host of others. So let's get this thing started by meeting the quarterbacks on the All Zone team. Savell Newton is back for his second All Zone appearance. The defending zoneman is looking to become a two time winner. Newton topped 1,000 yards on the ground and threw for over 900 yards, guiding the Bulldogs to a 9 2 mark. Von Patrick is back for a second all-zone honor. The Mullins quarterback showed his explosive rushing skills as well as the ability to throw the deep ball. Patrick is heading to the North-South All-Star game as a defensive back. Lee Page of Dillon is also a DB for the South squad, but like Patrick, will play him at QB. The Wildcats leader showed the ability to leave the pocket when nobody was open, headed to the open field. Page found the zone over 20 times on the ground and in the air. Jonathan Williams is a big catalyst in the West Florence Knights turnaround. Williams is a three-way threat, over 1,500 yards of total offense, from passing and running to special teams. The senior is one of three Knights on the 2002 All-Zone team. Bernard Galloway was always good for big yards on the Marlboro County offense. The North-South All-Star racked up 970 yards and seven scores in his senior year. Vernell Jones is known by Tootie Boot in Wild Gator country. The Lakeview Junior finished fifth in the zoneman. When Jones touched the football, big things happened. He averaged well over 12 yards per carry. Vernell had the most touchdowns in the area. Latta's Jason McGill was part of the two-headed monster in the Vikings' backfield. The senior topped 1,000 yards and showed the ability to make the big play week in and week out. Raleigh Singletary is back for a second stint on the All-Zone team. The Dillon senior topped 1,200 yards in 2002 and helped pace the Wildcats to a region championship. Tony Wallace is a two-time All-Zoner as well, and the hardest working back on the Grand Strand earned the honor. The senior averaged over 25 carries per game. Wallace finished fourth in the Zoneman race. Quinton Young was the super back in the West Florence offense, and the junior was super indeed. With over 1,400 yards and over seven yards per carry, Young became a nightmare for opponents when his number was called. I know Lou Holtz and Tommy Bowden and a host of other coaches would like to get their hands on this talent behind me. Let's go down to the restaurant area where Mark Haggard is standing by with the head man at Dillon. Mark? Mark? I'm here with Jackie Hayes and Coach Hayes. It's not a surprise you win every year at Dillon, it seems, don't you? We try to. <laughs> yeah, you reel off a lot of victories, and you've got two young men standing on the stage. Talk about Lee Page and Raleigh Singletary. Well, both of them had outstanding careers at Dillon and been a big big ingredient in us being successful over the last three years. Both of them are outstanding men, and I look for them to have a bright future in college. You always seem to come up with the kids that uh, have that winning attitude year after year. What is the Dillon secret? Well, uh, we work hard, and we've got a lot of tradition, and it kind of – filters down to the young to the younger kids in, in our smaller programs and they kind of look up to the guys that are on the varsity and, and want to be like them and these two guys have been real good role models coach jackie hayes of the dillon wildcats the head man of the nasty cats now let's go to walt all right thanks a lot mark we have with me tony wallace running back from myrtle beach high school and tony it was a close race for a zoneman finalist you came in one vote behind the number third, number three guy on the zoneman ballot. So you were number four. Talk a little bit about what it means to be on a team like this. I mean, it means a lot to be on a team like this because it's like the top 40 players in this area. And, you know, we got a lot of guys that made the shrine bowl in the north and south off of this team. So I think it means a lot. 
You were a workhorse for Myrtle Beach this year. You had the most carries in the area. Uh, talk about what it means to be such an important part to a, to a pretty good offense. Well, it means a lot because 70% of the offense was based around me, but uh, we had other threats than me, like Adam and Nick, mine, Bubba Watts and stuff. So, you know, I was uh, like a big part of the offense, but we had other weapons. All right, well, congratulations on making this team. And, Rich, I'm going to send it back to you. Thanks a lot, Walt. Time to take a break. When we come back, we've got to get some people to block for these guys. We'll meet the offensive line, wide receivers, and tight end on the 2002 All-Zone team. That's when our special continues from Damon's Restaurant in Myrtle Beach right after this. Welcome back to the show. Coming up later in the hour, we'll meet the 2002 Zone Scholar Athlete plus the Zoneman will be awarded. But first, let's continue to look at the top 40 players in the PD in the Grand Strand with the offensive line, wide receivers, and tight end. Hartsville's Trevor Allen was a key two-way contributor for Lewis Lineberger. Allen was Kenny James' top target, hauling in 43 catches for 458 yards and six scores for a much-improved Red Foxes team. Jamel Green is only a sophomore, and the future is bright for the Carolina Forest wideout. Green had 41 catches for 473 yards and will team with Zach Cerny as a dangerous duo for the next two years. East Clarendon's Maurice Kennedy is a complete athlete. Rushing for over 800 yards and spending some time at quarterback, we think like the college scouts in lining him up at a wideout, where he had six grabs for 156 yards and a couple of scores. Waleed Rushdan is back as an all-zoner, and the Wilson Tiger did not disappoint. Rushdan led the stat zone in receiving yards, making spectacular catches on a regular basis. Matt Reese Vereen is one of two North Myrtle Beach Chiefs on the all-zone team. Besides being a stellar linebacker, Vereen had 16 catches for 304 yards and four scores. Our tight end is Wilson's Lawrence Timmons. The junior had the most TD receptions in the area, and with over 16 yards per catch, Timmons has caught the eye of many Division I powers. Tank Arnett is a North-South All-Star and the man who makes big holes for the Dillon attack of fellow All-Zoners Lee Page and Raleigh Singletary. Drew Gaster is the unsung hero of one of the most improved teams in the area. Gaster was on the field for almost every play and was a big reason that Johnsonville went from three wins to ten in 2002. Hawk Grooms is just a junior, which is good news for Marlboro County fans. Savelle Newton and Bernard Galloway can attest that Grooms makes the holes that makes the big plays. Leonard Stafford is a leader of a Carver's Bay line that paced the Bears to a 9-1 regular season and a first-ever region championship for the school. Stafford was a big factor on many big gainers. Guy Townsend is a two-way star for Jewel McLaurin and Lakeview. The Wild Gator senior will take part in the North-South All-Star game. Bailey Walker is making some history. The senior is the first Sockisty Brave to gain an all-zone honor. As we predicted this summer, Walker made quite a splash in his senior campaign. Our kicker is the man they call Noodle. Chris Windham is a Shrine Bowl representative and has shown the ability to boot big boomers from all over the field for J.R. Boyd and the Lamar Silver Foxes. What a great combination of speed, skill, and brute strength behind me. Mark Haggard standing by with a man who has a state championship. Congratulations to the Lamar Silver Foxes and J.R. Boyd. Mark? Mark? Thanks a lot, Rich. 61 years. That's how long Lamar has been playing football, and you finally did it. It's about time. It, it was in our community. It was, they really loved it. When we came home, uh, there was a big parade uptown, and... Uh, we tried to drive down Main Street, and they made the kids get off the bus and walk down Main Street, and it was quite a thrill for those young men. You've got a kicker on this team. They call him Noodle. Tell us a little bit about Chris Windham. He's something special. You had a complete team this year. I mean, you beat him at every phase of the game when you beat people. Yeah, he was, he's got quite a leg. Uh, he, 
you know, we had the kicking game and uh, the offense, and of course our defense was tremendous. But uh, Chris was a great one, and we're going to miss him. He he did a great job for us, uh, punting and field goals, especially punting in the playoffs, keeping people backed up. Jr. is a superstitious guy. He has to find a penny before every game. Heads up, he's got a pocket full of pennies. Walt. Thanks a lot, Mark. You know, you have a lot of offensive talent in this area, but without the offensive line, none of those guys will be putting up the numbers that they did. And with me is Dustin Tank Arnett out of Dillon High School. Talk a little bit about being on this team and being with a group of offensive players like we have up on the stage. Well, this is a great opportunity to be able to play with some guys like this. You know, I get used to playing these guys over the past four years on Friday nights, and it's just a Great opportunity to come and stay with them a week and practice with them and be on the same team. as. Uh... Talk a little bit about uh, this week. You're in the north-south game. Obviously, that's huge, but the WPD all-zone banquet has to take the cake. Oh, yeah, it does. I, I didn't even know that I made it earlier this week, but uh, kind of brightened up my week when I found out that I did make it. So uh, He also told me he had the ribs and chicken combo and two baked potatoes because his mom didn't want to eat his. Yes, yeah, so she gave it to me. She was nice. All right. Congratulations to Tank Arnett and all the offensive players that we have up there. Rich, I'm going to send it back to you. Plenty of chicken and ribs behind me here with the offensive line, wide receivers, tight end, and don't forget about Noodle, our all-zone kicker. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll go on the other side of the ball and meet the all-zone defensive team. That's when our 2002 special continues from Damon's Restaurant in Myrtle Beach right after this. Welcome back to the 2002 All Zone Awards, highlighted by the top 40 players in the PD and the Grand Strand. And coming up later, we'll finally find out who won the Zoman. But first, let's get to the defensive side of the ball. Defense wins championships, and with this group, we're going to be pretty tough. Let's check out the All Zone defense. Wilson's Ryan Austin is one of two members of the Tigers' dark side defense on the all-zone team. The nose guard had five and a half sacks and the ability to wrap up offensive weapons. Caleb Strother makes the big plays that define an all-zoner like this stop against Wilson. The West Florence senior was part of a defense that stepped up big in 2002. Jamie Mack is the heart and soul of the Lamar Silver Foxes. Mack electrified on offense and was always in on the action at nose guard. Despite playing through injuries, Mack finished seventh in the Zoneman race. Myrtle Beach's Mikey McCoy is a north-south all-star and part of our defensive line. He did a big part in stopping many an offensive attack. Adrian Moses brings brute strength to the all-zone team, squatting 500 pounds in the state strength meet. Joining him is teammate Gannon Mozik, who has the eyes of a number of colleges interested in his services. This duo helped South Lawrence make the always tough 4A Division II playoffs. Trent Black is one of the most underrated players in the state. Ask opponents and they'll tell you that T. Black was a handful on both sides of the ball. He's the Chiefs' lone representative in the North-South game. Tony Carr is the driving force on Carver's Bay. We've seen him dazzle on Friday night zone with big runs, but he filled the middle for the area's second-ranked defense. Justin Durant is a Zoneman finalist as Balladers recognized the Wilson senior who had the ability to dominate on defense. Adam McNemma is a second-time All-Zoner. The Myrtle Beach senior finished sixth in the Zoneman, receiving two first-place votes. With over 130 tackles, his stock continues to rise in the college ranks. Alan Patrick joins Justin Durant in the Shrine Bowl and on the Zoneman finalist podium. AP was simply a menace on both sides of the ball. Melvin Singleton rounds out the linebacking core. The Conway senior has a rare zone feat. He was an all-zone running back as a junior and an all-zone linebacker as a senior. The first ever offense defense two-timer. Do you smell what the Brock is cooking? Area opponents knew it was not wise to throw Rick Brockington's way. The Lake City DB stepped up on offense and defense. Jermaine Harrington was part of the well-oiled Shiraw offensive machine. 
lost in his 1,000-yard-plus rushing prowess is the ability to step up on D. We'll take him at defensive back. Tremaine Hunter drew the tough assignment of Class 4A's best receivers week in and week out. The Conway senior quietly shut down area opponents in 2002. Freddie Johnson was part of the stingy Hemingway defense. The Tigers' DB had the top interception total in the area with 13 picks and showed off his athletic ability on more than one occasion. Lattice Derek Wilson teamed with Jason McGill to terrorize opponents on the ground, but Wilson also did his fair share of damage in the secondary. Wilson and Latta became a 1A force in 2002. Another collection of stellar talent, the all-zone defense right here. I think we could just take a bus, head on up the Shrine Bowl. we got to keep AP and Justin Durant, and we'll give that South Carolina team a run for its money. Mark Haggard is standing by with a man who's been to williams Bryce Stadium for two straight years. Mark? I am standing by with Chuck Jordan of Conway High School, two straight state championship appearances. And you came away just a little bit short this year, but that's not what we want to talk about. You've got three young men you're very proud of on the stage. No doubt about it. I tell you, those three guys have, have played some great football for us at Conway High School for the last three years, and we're very proud of them. What's this about so serious? Do you know about that? Alan no. Patrick came up with that. Well, I, I tell you, there's no telling what some of those guys came up with. Well, we all have our idiosyncrasies. When I come out to practice, you've got a piece of grass out of your mouth, and you've got your cap on, and you're doing your thing. And I guess so serious is their way of getting down to business because you've got three defensive players on the all-zone team. Yes, and they have really uh, played well for us. And it seems like each one of them knew when we had to have them step up, and they did that on a regular basis. Look out because they got some good ones coming back next year as well. Chuck Jordan of the Conway Tigers. Now let's go back to Walt. Thanks a lot, Mark. I have with me Jermaine Harrington, a running back and defensive back from Sherraw High School. Jermaine, we could have taken you on offense, but we decided to take you on defense. Which do you prefer? Um, I prefer offense, guys. I believe um, I made most of my big plays there, you know. And I just ran hard there, too. Do you like uh, laying some hits, though, on defense? Do you like staring across that line and seeing that running back coming towards you and putting your shoulder into him a little bit? Yeah, because um, at halfback, I get hit all the time. You know, on defense, so I don't want to hit them back. So, uh, Talk a little bit about what it means to be on a defense of this caliber. I mean, th this is a great, great defense, uh, this number of guys. Talk about what it means to you to be on a team like this. It means a lot because um, – like it's like a pleasure just to be on a team with the top forty players in this area, and um, it, it just means a lot to me. All right. Well, congratulations to Jermaine Harrington. Congratulations to all our defense, Rich. It's getting close. We're going to find out who the Zoneman finalist is very soon. I'm going to send it back to you up on that stage. You're getting dwarfed by some of those players. Walt, thanks. Let's hold off on the Zoman for just a couple of more minutes. Let's take another break. When we come back, we're going to meet our 2002 Zone Scholar Athlete of the Year. That's when our special continues from Damon's Restaurant right after this. Welcome back to the 2002 All Zone Banquet here at Damon's Restaurant in Myrtle Beach. It's time now to make a presentation of perhaps the most important award of the night. It's for an individual who not only got it done on the field, but off the field as well. Mark Haggard introduces us to the 2002 All Zone Scholar Athlete, Leonard Stafford of Carver's Bay. He's built like a fire plug. Teammates call him Nardi. Leonard Stafford stands just five foot nine and weighs 258 pounds. Number 62 is a steamroller on the Carver's Bay offensive line. An unsung hero, leading the way for running backs Tony Carr and Sammy Milton to rush for a combined 2,000 yards this season. Anyone that plays offensive line has got a piece of my heart with them because, you know, that's where the real men play. He's Mr. Consistent. Um, he's our top winner in uh, the classroom, and he's definitely our top winner, you know, come to lineman when he comes on the football field. 
it takes a lot of dedication. You got to stay on task at all times. You know what I'm saying? Don't let practice and stuff interfere with your schoolwork, but practice hard and do all your things right. Stafford plays both ways. On the Bears' defensive line, Stafford hits hard. And at school, he studies hard. The senior carries a 3.5 GPA, and he scored 1,000 on the SAT. He personifies the term student athlete. Stafford is unassuming. He sits in the back of the classroom, ever focused on both his school books and the future. I like math a lot, so I want to be a computer engineer. I see myself on my own company. I had to, you know, own my own company and do my thing. He's the kind of young man that, that, that you would, you know, he, you'd love for him to take your daughter out. I mean, he's that kind of kid. This is a proud day for Carver's Bay High School, producing a shining example of what a student athlete should be. Bernard Stafford, WPDE All Zone Scholar Athlete of the Year. All right, thanks a lot, Mark. That was a great piece. I'm here with Lenard. And Lenard, when you think of offensive linemen, you think of dumb. At least I do. Rich Krampanis was an offensive lineman. Mark Haggard was an offensive lineman. But you personify a smart offensive lineman. Tell us, how does it help being a smart offensive lineman? It helps you get your blocking, to, blocking assignments right. You know, like the defense are doing a lot of shifting and things. you got to be able to find who to block and stuff like that. Now, you say you want to be a computer engineer. Maybe you could come over and help the sports department. We're having trouble with our internet and our email. You think you'd come over and help us uh, program that? Yeah, I think I can do that. All right. You don't have any schools in mind right now, but uh, it, I'm sure any college coach would be glad to sign you. What do you think about uh, heading to college? Now, I want to go to college. You know, that's one of my main goals in life, to go to college and graduate. <laughs> Right. Congratulations to Lenard Stafford again. Mark, I'm going to send it over to you. Thanks, Walt. I'm standing next to a man who we affectionately around the sports office call the Baby Bear. Papa Bear to his players, but we like to call you the Baby Bear. A 2A state championship, and Lenard Stafford was certainly one of the young men that helped you get there. Oh, yes. Uh, Lenard plays on offense and defense. And he's like our little general out there. Uh, when we have him and Tony Carr on defense and offense, uh, one handles the line, the other one handles the backfield. On defense, one handles the line, the other one handles the linebackers and DBs. And those young men do an excellent job. Uh, I know Coach Great, who's our defensive coordinator, you know, he's always, you know, growling and snarling. But I tell you what, those are two young men to keep him straight. So, uh, you know, those two guys, you know, they do it not only – you know, in the, uh, on the field, but in the classroom as well. And, and, and Lenar Stafford really personifies what you really want in a student athlete. And I'm really proud to know that and, know, and, and get to know that he's going to move on to something else a lot greater. And he's going to, I'll be able to say, hey, one day that, that kid makes it, I want to say, you know, I had an opportunity to be with him and had a chance to coach him. Very quickly, 22 years as a coach, and now you finally did it. You brought home a 2A state championship. Uh, it's a great feeling. Um, I'm telling you, uh, these young men and, you know, the, the school and community, I mean, they just rally behind us game after game after game, even when no one thought we'd win. You know, they hung in there with us. And you got to say one thing, you know, uh, you got to have some luck in this game, but you also got to have a little bit of the human spirit. And those kids had that human spirit and that fortitude. And we have to thank God that, you know, the Lord has been with us all throughout, and, and that's, that's a very important thing. You know, and Coach... Uh, uh, Coach Bennett touched on that. You know, you got to have God in your life, and you got to have, you know, to believe and, and, and serve. And those young men, they work hard for what they want, and they never gave up their dream. Their dream was to make William Bryce. They said that in August. And uh, lo and behold, we were standing in Williams Bryce, and uh, then they said, Coach, we're going to win this. And here we are. Coach Nate Thompson of the Carver's Bay Bears, nobody was able to steal his honey pot. He got the 2A state championship. Back to you, Rich. Thanks a lot, Mark. A lot of people didn't know where Carver's Bay was throughout the Palmetto State. They do now. Congratulations to the Bears on a state championship. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll take a look at the top plays captured by the zone cameras, the zone plays of the year, as voted on by you, the fans, when our 2002 All Zone Special continues right after this. Welcome back to the 2002 All Zone Banquet here at Damon's Restaurant in Myrtle Beach. 
Over 1,500 fans logged on to WPDE.com to cast their votes for the best plays caught by our zone cameras. So here they are, the end zone plays of the year for 2002. Marlboro County Savelle Newton shows why he's the zoneman against Wilson. Draws Jarrell Jelly Bean McManus with the concentration against Andrews. I'm Paul Blackman. And I'm Jarrell McManus. And we'd like to accept this award on behalf of Straw High football team. The whole team came together for that game and just gave us a chance to do it. We want to thank WPDE for giving us this award also. And uh, basically we just had an opportunity to go up at halftime. And I got back there, dropped back, threw the ball up for Jarrell to make the play, and he came through on us. And, you know what I'm saying, I was... I was intending on trying to break up the pass because the DB was already there, but when I saw him drop it and I saw the ball falling out the air, I just reached up and grabbed it. Fantastic freshman Jermaine Holmes of Green Sea Floyd's on the punt return against Creek Bridge. Uh, hi, my name is Jermaine Holmes. I'm from Green Sea Floyd High School. Uh, I'd like to thank my coaches, Channel 15, Channel 15 News, and most of, most of my players on my team for really giving me a chance to make Special Team Player of the Year. Uh, the, the most important person I'd like to thank is Coach Henson, Mr. Bavar, Coach Small, and all the seniors, and Willie Smith. Jeff Jeffords of Lamar picks up the loose ball against Timminsville. Jeff Jeffords from Lamar High School. Uh, it was a region game against Timminsville at Timminsville. It was a sweep around the outside, and someone caused the fumble, and I just got lucky and picked it up and ran it in. Conway's Karibi Goss causes the fumble. Sockesty's Dustin Harnish with the great coverage against Lower Richland. Hi, my name is Dustin Harnish. I won Hit of the Year for WPD. I'm from Sockesty High School. I want to thank the team, the coaches, everybody that voted for me. Catfish and Manchild. 44, real number right here. Thanks again to everybody who logged on to WPDE.com throughout the season to check out all the internet end zone from the stat zone to web video to voting for the plays of the year. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll meet the three finalists for the 2002 Zone Mint. The waiting is about to end. That story when our special continues from Damon's in Myrtle Beach right after this. Welcome back to WPDE's All Zone Banquet, the third annual banquet here at Damon's Restaurant in Myrtle Beach. And it's time to meet three special young student athletes who are up for the 2002 Zoman. Mark Haggard gives us a detailed profile on our three finalists. Our first Zoneman candidate is from Wilson. Six foot one, 225 pound inside linebacker Justin Durant. He's a fierce hitter on Wilson's dark side defense. Um, hopefully this year, maybe a defensive player will be able to win this home in award. His job is to be our quarterback on defense, and that's what he does. He makes sure everybody's where they're supposed to be. He makes the key reads. Uh, he uh, reads the formations and sets the defense accordingly, and uh, he does an outstanding job of it. Durant is popular on campus. He's an honor roll student. Among his classes, African-American studies. Head football coach Daryl Page is the teacher. Well, he made me. Um, that's not just because I'm the coach, because he earned it. Of course, I got to get an A in my coach's class, so I'm doing pretty well. Um, but throughout my um, my high school, you know, at school or whatever, I have to um, doing my best that I can. Um, my parents brought me up well. They told me I have to do all my work, so I go out and try to make them proud. Durant recorded nearly 150 tackles this season, ranking him among the best in the state. 
His older brother, Double D, Darian Durant, was a star at Wilson and is now the North Carolina Tar Heels starting quarterback. My brother's meant everything to me. He showed me the road. He went D1, like one of the first D1 players to come from Wilson. And um, so I'm just trying to follow in his footsteps. He comes and he gives me advice on what to do, what he sees in college, how the linebackers play, and what, what I need to work on. So I really appreciate it. I wish he had another brother coming through. So, um, I, you know, we've been fortunate. Mr. and Mrs. Durant have um, provided us with, uh, since I had my tenure, two outstanding athletes. Justin is a student of football who transforms his knowledge into a Friday nightmare for ball carriers. Coach Page says it best. Impact like a train wreck. Speed like a bullet. There's no question he is the real deal. So um, if you're looking for an inside linebacker, Division I, one double A's, this is your kid. And he's got the academics to prove it and the pedigree. So um, all in all, getting a top shelf edition. Next stop, the Shrine Bowl. Then he'll snap up a college football scholarship. That Zoneman finalist, Justin Durant. Our next Zoneman finalist, Marlboro County quarterback, Savelle Newton. Last year, Newton won the Zoneman as a junior. With former teammate Tymere Zimmerman winning the 2000 Zoneman, Savelle looks to keep the trophy in Bennettsville for a third straight year. Rich, I want to help you produce this week's show. And by the way, I want the zone. Newton led the Bulldogs to a state championship last year with this touchdown pass in the final seconds in an epic victory over Conway at williams Bryce Stadium. This year, the Dogs were banned from postseason play following a postgame brawl. Although Savelle was not involved, he was snubbed by the Shrine Bowl after his character was called into question. Uh, I, I don't know what else you got to do to make the Shrine Bowl if he... If, if he can't make it, I don't know what else you got to do to make it. Are you going to be really angry if he doesn't make the all-zone team? <laughs> I got a feeling you guys got a lot better sense than the Shrine Bowl staff. But if you just look at somebody and what our team went through this year, just to see that how a leader steps up when the team is down and out and just, just be there just to help to pick the team up as a, as a person by itself. And we're well, not going to say by myself, but... This as an individual because a lot of people on the team was looking up to me as Savelle, what we're going to do now that we got about 16 people out in. And I just feel that I gave them, say, hey, I'm going to be there. I played hurt, my knees hurt, my legs hurt, and I'm, I'm still dealing with it now. Through it all, this Wallace native has proven his detractors wrong through his conduct, leadership, and spectacular play. He's active in the community, speaking at schools and visiting nursing homes. As a freshman, Savelle played in the band, but Coach Boyd convinced him to play football. Savelle is also an artist. Check out his brush strokes on the doghouse. And he loves to sing. Since Jesus is my potion, a constant friend is he. His eyes is on the sparrow, and I know he watches, he watches me. His teammates call him Cadillac. His motto, strictly business. Newton used his dazzling footwork to run for more than 1,000 yards and 15 touchdowns this season. He threw for nearly 1,000 more with his cannon-like arm. He's got a great arm. He's got, you know, he's 6'2", 215 pounds. He runs a 4'3", 840. Uh, he's just one of those few that come along in, in a coaching career that you, you're lucky to have on your side. The Cadillac does it all. Punting, receiving, he even played defensive back for the second half of the season, making several impact plays. I believe if I get a chance at the, at the college level to show what I'm capable of doing, I probably might one day be on Sundays, Sunday TV. Nearly every major college in the country covets number 17. South Carolina appears to be the front runner. Saturday's North-South All-Star Game is the next stop for Savelle Newton, Zoneman finalist. Our third Zoneman finalist is known as AP, Conway linebacker and running back Alan Patrick. 
a six foot two, 190 pound athletic machine. <laughs> I'm a nice person. <laughs> I can get along with everybody. I mean, You're not nice on Friday nights. Uh, not really. I can act up at times. After seven semesters at Conway High, Patrick signed with Coffeyville Community College in Kansas. But he decided to return to high school and was granted his eighth semester of eligibility. He'll graduate in January. AP says his parents have been instrumental. They pushed me as in getting my work done and doing good on the football field. They say I can make money by doing that. So I'm going to take it as that and I'm going to do what they say. AP turned heads last season by rushing for more than 1,000 yards in the playoffs alone. This year, he's been more of a role player, splitting time in the backfield with Melvin Singleton and Bobby Wallace. He's bought into the team concept. He's been an encourager for his teammates, and, and I'm most proud of that because those are character values that's going to take him a long, long way in, in life. Patrick is a horse, using his 4-5 speed to average nearly seven yards a carry. On defense, AP is a bone-crushing presence at linebacker and defensive back. He calls his big hits decapitation. He has the ability to accelerate what the big boys call surge, and, and that's the thing that separates him from most other people, is just that ability to take off and be, be uh, 60 mile an hour in about two seconds. Patrick comes from a strong football bloodline. His first cousin, Von Patrick, is a WPDE all-zone quarterback at Mullins. Next stop for zoneman finalist Alan Patrick of Conway is the Shrine Bowl. Three tremendous student athletes standing here on the big stage, the zoneman finalist stage. Justin Duran out of Wilson, Alan Patrick out of Conway, and Savelle Newton out of Marlboro County. The waiting is about to end. When we come back, we'll take the black tape off and find out who the 2002 Zoman winner is right after this. Welcome back. It's time to present the 2002 Zoman. 44 balloters, area coaches and media cast their votes for the top three players in the area. And it's time to say the magic words. The 2002 Zoneman stays in Bennettsville for a third year. Savelle Newton out of Marlboro County wins it for a second straight year. There you go, sir. Come on up here. Well, Savelle Newton, you've had a tough season. There, there have been a lot of things that have gone in a negative way for you in Marlboro County. Does this make up for it somewhat or all of it? Well, you know, um, it kind of it feels real good to um, be the first one to win it twice, and you know, our, our team had a rough season and just made the best of what we had to go with. And we just thank God to give us a chance to finish out the season. And this right here just makes me feel a whole lot better. Now, were you worried? I mean, Shrine Bowl snub? You weren't worried about a zoneman snub? Well, you know. Um, Hey, Justin Durant, Alan Patrick, I played against both of them, both of them great athletes, you know. I mean, I just, I wasn't expecting it twice, but it just happened that way. And, they, I mean, we, I'm not just taking it for me, I'm taking it for all three of us. It's just going to stay at my house, though. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've got two trophies. Are you running out of room there yet? Well, you, well um, they really, like, when you walk in the house, you can see it just sitting there. And, you know, I just put this one right beside it. Now, now they, you know, your football career is over as far as high school goes, but now comes the recruiting game. What's your mindset as you're about to go on your visits and, and decide where you're going to play college football? Well, um, you know, I'm just going to weigh out all my options and I'm going to take all my visits and which one, you know, I feel me, my mom, my dad feel best for me. That's what we're going to do with. Who are you going to tell first where you're going to college? My mom and my dad. Who are you going to tell second? Coach Boyd. Who are you going to tell third? I don't know. <laughs> let, me, let me get this trophy. Nah, this way. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Savelle Newton, the winner. Let's go to a proud coach, Dean Boyd, standing by with Walt and Mark. Well, Mark, here we are. We handed out game balls all year, but finally the biggest award of the year is handed out, the Zoneman, and we are here with a proud coach, Coach Boyd from Marlboro County. The Zoneman has never left Marlboro County, but the Bulldog left there once. You got a new one of those. Uh, what are some uh, kids maybe next year? Do you think it's going to stay there? 
I don't know. There's a lot of good players in the area, and uh, we've just been real fortunate to have two of the best and uh, over the past three or four years, and uh, we don't have too many of those coming back. So we, I don't know, but we'll do the best we can try to get it back. <laughs> Coach, just some brief comments on the Cadillac. Boy, he was something. He really was. He's, uh, he's a great player. He's done a great job for us, and, uh, you know, we're just uh, – we're going to be sad to see him leave. I know that's one thing for sure, but he's done a great job. We're, we're looking forward to next season. I'm looking forward to seeing what he does and where he goes and what, what he does with his career because he's got a bright future ahead of him if he does the things I think he can do. All right, thanks a lot. Coach Boyd, congratulations to Savell Newton. And for Mark Haggard and I, we're going to be heading to the hoop zone pretty soon, Mark. So uh, get ready. But, Rich, we're going to send it back to you. Gentlemen, thanks so much for your hard work all season long. And the Hoop Zone does premiere January 3rd right here on WPDE. But let's take a moment to pay homage to two great athletes who made it here to the Zoman stage, starting with our second-place finisher, Alan Patrick out of Conway. Well, AP, I imagine you're happy you came back for that last semester, and it's been a great season. What does it mean for you to be on the stage with – Three guys who I think are going to be just absolutely fabulous on Saturdays in college football. I mean, it feels good to be up here with two outstanding players. I mean, they'll go out there on the field just like I do, give everything they got on every game, on every down, on every time. You know, like last year we lost in like 15 seconds. And time is everything. You, know, you got to take time the most, the way to give it to you. Yeah. Now, you got a cousin on this team, Vaughn Patrick. What, you, guys, you guys are doing a good job. But so so uh, talk about him a little bit, and uh, it must be a fun family time now with two Patricks on the all-zone team. Yeah, we grew up. We had our ups and downs and everything. I mean, he just came out and had a wonderful year. I mean, I love him. I mean, he's just an outstanding player. Now, Savelle said when he's finding out where he's going to college, he's going to tell me third. Since I'm so serious, when, when are you going to tell me where you're going to college? Well, not be so serious, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Patrick, everybody, congratulations. And let's bring in the third-place finisher. I know coaches love defense. That's why we're always going to have defensive guys on the stage. And this guy, I'll tell you, whoever, whatever school gets Justin Durant is going to be very, very lucky. Congratulations on a great season. What does it mean for you to be up here with Savelle Newton and Alan Patrick? Well, you know, it means a lot because um, I played against both of them also, and they're two great players, you know, and um, it doesn't even anger me any that I didn't win. You know, it's cool because I thought that he deserved to win it anyway. Now, your brother Darian, who's at the University of North Carolina, was not around during the zone era. I, I think Darian might have won a zone, and he would have been on this stage, but I, I guess you can show him this trophy because – you're a Zoman finalist, and he isn't. Yeah, I guess so. But um, he's been one of my biggest supporters, so, you know, i just like to thank him for everything he's given me. Ladies and gentlemen, our third-place finisher, Justin Duran, out of Wilson High School. <laughs> and let's get Savelle Newton up here one more time as we about to put a close on the high school football season. When Savelle Newton won the Zoman in 2001, just a few feet away from here, I asked him to take care of one thing for me in the 2002 season, and that was to get the job done in the classroom. And you did that with a 990 SAT. I just want to thank you for representing this trophy and this community and the zone so well. I want to thank you for that. All right, there he is, the winner of the 2002 Zoman Trophy, Savelle Newton, a two-time winner, joining Lada's Raymond Felton as a two-time winner of the Mr. Hoop Zone Award. Congratulations to Savelle, and for everybody behind the scenes who's done a tremendous job all season long, thank you so much, you the fan, for making us a part of your Friday night each and every week. The End Zone will be back next season, and for everybody here, I'm Rich Crampanis. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next season, everybody. Good night.